I often use a double thread when I'm making long and short soft shading. This is because I like to make a really thick covering around the edge of a shape and then to make the fine details with a very fine single thread. So I've threaded up with double thread, cast on, and now here we go. This is an area, a very simple shape, it's rather like a petal that you might see on anything else, and this same method is used for everything. The first stitch divides the area in half, so you come up at the base of a blue line I've marked here and divide the area in half with that first stitch. The second stitch is a little shorter. I th often think it should be called long and three quarters rather than long and short. So the second stitch is about three quarters of the length and I'm going down, you'll notice, just over the outside edge of the marked line. Third stitch is long, so you're alternating long and three quarter stitches. Now I'm working hand to hand and I'm keeping my needle at 90 degrees to the linen all the time. If you scoop from the side, you're fighting the natural weave of the linen. And this very heavyweight linen needs a very sharp and rather fat needle. So this is a metric size one cruel needle with a specially made point. Now, as you go towards the edge of the shape, it, this turns into a satin stitch because obviously this part of the feather would go behind the next one. In cruel work, you always start with the background and work towards the foreground. Now, when I get to the very edge, avoid the trap of making a very small stitch um, because this looks clumsy and it'll stick out, but instead, come up and go down in the same hole. Can you see this? And I'll put my thumbnail in the way and that will just curve round naturally and that'll fill the shape beautifully. When you've stitched half of the long and short soft shading in the first colour, you carry your thread across the back and continue with a three quarter stitch next to that original long stitch. So then you complete the second half in exactly the same way. If you run out of thread, just finish off and cast on again in the usual way. When you've worked about an inch of long and short soft shading in the first colour, review what you've done. Have a look and see if you've made little gaps around the edge or if there are shadows between the stitches because what you could do is go back over with either a single or a double thread and just fill in the pieces which are looking a bit sparse. Just make sure that the edge is well covered with stitches. So I'm just popping a couple in there and that makes all the difference before I could move on to the next colour. In the second colour I've come up through the very first stitch, the backbone stitch of that shape, and I'm splitting the work that I've already got there. So come up through and then lay your thread down by holding it down with your finger of your non-needle hand, of your wool hand. Pop your needle down where it meets the next line or the next design and just pull it through. You can see I'm working hand to hand and keeping my needle at 90 degrees to the linen. Now the next stitch is shorter and also goes down. The third stitch is another long stitch, so every time I do a long stitch I hold it down and pop that in. Now I hope that helps you keeping the direction of your stitches correct. Now I've missed a little bit here, I can just go back and put another stitch in. So don't worry too much about making this perfect the first time you do it. Just stitch away, enjoy it, get into the rhythm of your stitching and then go back, review it and add extra stitches where necessary. So as you can see I'm coming to the end of the first half with the second colour. And I'm not going to work right the way to the edge because I like the look of the first colour going all the way around the perimeter of the shape. And then I like the look of the second and first colours mixing and then the second colour all by itself. 
So it needs to be thick enough, dense enough to just cover the linen, but no more. I'm returning to the original area I worked, splitting the area in half and coming up with a short stitch next to the original long stitch I worked and then throwing very long stitches wherever I can, deep into the shape. Just remember that the first colour is quite tall, it's quite deep and dense, so you'll lose some of the second colour as you bring it south. So if I turn it to there, you can see that that tip is actually much lower, that tip of colour is much lower than the actual action of the needle. I'll show you that again. So when I come up and go down, you lose that top end of colour. So go much higher than you first intended. And you complete the second half in exactly the same way.